I like Gen 9 as a spectator because I don't know anything about it, so the annoying hyper-analytical part of my brain can't kick in. I have trouble cutting loose and letting go and taking it easy, so... <laughs> I need this kind of thing. It's actually exactly like the dilemma the protagonist of Hot Fuzz has. Anyway, uh, so since I don't know anything about Gen 9, I'm not really invested one way or another, all I want to see is just the extremely min-maxed Pokemon destroying each other and changing their types mid-battle. I mean, are you serious? It's, uh, it's the dumb action movie of Pokemon. I just want the equivalent of car chases and explosions and gunfights and other... You know, one-liners, if possible. <laughs> uh, although those don't have the same effect in Pokemon. Those are just kind of sad and not funny or cool. So, yeah, with this in mind, I have no personal investment in Generation 9. So when the sleep ban was being discussed, you know, the potential sleep ban, then I felt nothing. And when the sleep ban actually came into effect, I did not have that change at all. Well, that's not entirely true. When I learned that someone had actually called Finchinator's real-life phone number and left him an angry voicemail because they were so mad about the sleep ban, I felt horrified. So that was pretty much the most significant... I should hope that's everyone's most significant takeaway from the sleep ban, just in case we forget that this is a game and that... Yeah, anyway... That aside, uh, I was not planning on making a video about Gen 9 sleep, and this is not a video about Gen 9 sleep, uh, but I wasn't really planning on it in general. And then my kind, intelligent viewers uh, were asking, hey, Gen 9 just banned sleep. Uh, maybe you should make a video about Gen or, uh, sleep being broken in every generation. And I was like, you know, that's actually a phenomenal idea. Thank you so much. So once again, I am leeching off the uh, wonderful ideas of my kind, intelligent viewers. And if I want to leave, leech off of them some more, respectfully, then I have a Patreon in the description. <laughs> Flawless. Okay, so uh, before we start getting into the generational hypotheticals, then I have a replay, uh, very recent, from the Smoking Premier League that just started. So the highest level of play you're going to be seeing in old generations because everyone's invested, everyone's bringing their best. And it perfectly encapsulates just how stupid sleep can be, and what the problem with it is, if there is one, because I'm not saying it's 100% one way or the other. So, uh, Smeargle goes for spikes here against the Zapdos lead, because if it's a faster Zapdos that subs, you don't want to spore into it. And in that case, then, you take the hit on the second turn, you get knocked into Salak range, and you whirlwind the Zapdos out. And uh, then you get your Salak Berry, and then you can outspeed and spore something else. So Smeargle will have done its job. So uh, the spike there is safe. And if Zapdos just T-bolts you on the first turn and is faster, then you're going to get knocked into Salak range anyway. So then you spore and you're off to the races. And obviously the best case scenario is if the Zapdos is slower. Because now you have the spike and you now are going to sleep. And a big part of maximizing sleep in uh, old generations, which I will speak for, I will not try to uh, speak for the new ones, is maximizing the turns that you actually have with the sleep. And what I mean by this is, if you want to sleep and then do something after, then it's much better if you can do that thing afterwards before you get the sleep, because then you already have that setup. And what I mean specifically by this is, if you have, let's say, a substitute Breloom in Gen 4, then if you can sub before you spore something, then you are absolutely golden. But if you get the spore off and then sub, then you know the opponent might start burning sleep turns. They might wake up early. You know, so that's generally the idea. So now on the second turn, uh, Smeargle has the spike already. That's where I was going with this. It has the spike, and now it's uh, going to get the spore off. So if it had spored first and then spiked, then something else might have switched in that would chase it out, like a Dugtrio, or would kill it, like a Dugtrio, or would chase it out like a Moltres. You know, so. Uh, in that instance, then you would only get one spike. But if you spike first and then spore, then you can do all sorts of things. Oh, let me get another layer of spikes. Let me use another status move to try to catch a switch. Let me whirlwind to scout, whatever. Uh, so, you see where that's going. But we're also going to see why sleep can be dumb. Because when you sleep first, then the opponent has already burned their one required turn of sleep. Because every gen past RBY, you cannot wake up on the turn you are slept. Of course, the trade-off in RBY is that you can't move when you wake up, so. Anyway, 
Uh, point being here that you are already getting into a pretty uncomfortable dice rolling game and it sways things very hard in both directions you know so and that is kind of the problem with sleep is that it's very RNG focused and as Pokemon gets more and more optimized over the years then we appreciate more and more uh, every year every game we play that just how important every turn is you know I th I think some uh, less experienced players are like oh it's not that big a deal it's just this turn and yeah it really especially in closer you know faster paced games of course but even in slower paced games then you will see just how crucial every single turn is you know it used to be oh I made a mistake on one turn big deal and now it's like yeah actually it is a big deal so uh, and with this concept in mind, then you see just how crucial getting an extra turn of sleep will be uh, for Smeargle. Or how crucial it only getting the one turn as it sleeps, because it sleeps, because now whatever Smeargle does, you know, even if it switches, if Zapdos immediately T-bolts, it's like it didn't sleep at all. So, uh, McMahon's going to go for that second layer of spikes. I don't know why the spikes aren't showing on the display. There we go. Uh, so, second layer of spikes, as Zapdos burns a turn of sleep, tries to wake up, okay. So now Zapdos has a likelier chance to wake up later on. And now Fori's gonna come in. Okay, he can try to threaten the spikes, but Smeargle's got three layers now, so... Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's exact. And the Zapdos is still asleep. So you can see here how this is kind of going to affect the game. And now Gengar, you know, one of the scariest Pokemon in the tier with three layers of spikes down is just going to be monstrous and uh, we're not going to get into the details of uh this oh the zapdos wakes up so yeah uh <laughs> so you see the rng there that allowed smiggle to get all three layers so easily i mean and you can, and that's also part of it that if you try and burn sleep you are very often giving your opponent a free turn and giving your opponent a free turn is why we don't use Hyper Beam. You know, if, if you want to simplify it that much. Because yes, a free turn is a big deal. And it kind of calls into question the whether sleep is healthy or not. To be able to uh, provide such free turns. Now, it's, Freeze is not the same thing. Uh, because another counterexample is, well, Freeze would be broken if you could just summon it at will. But it's not the same thing because the chance to dethaw it can just go on forever theoretically or almost forever and the dethaw rate is much much lower it's like 10 percent or you know 20 percent um what is it 20 percent yeah it's 20 percent gen 3 and onwards that's 10 in gen 2 and never in gen 1 of course but uh yeah so the and we it's freeze is still so powerful that we have to uh instate freeze clause which doesn't exist in the games to limit it so, and of course, uh, Sleep Claws function similarly, although you have more control over sleep. Uh, not fully. I know there are things like Effect Spore that uh, I think now with the lift of the Sleep Ban in Gen 9 and the, uh, the repealing of Sleep Claws as a result, then now you can theoretically put multiple Pokemon to sleep with Effect Spore. I'm really interested to see if anyone could actually pull that off. I mean, it's so unlikely, but... Because it might, the effect spore might not even trigger sleep. It might trigger uh, paralysis or poison. So, anyway, so the whole point of this being that when you are able to summon free turns so easily with sleep, because as much as you spam ice beam, you still can't guarantee it. But you know, it's ten percent, let's say, every time. Twenty percent if it's ice punch Jirachi, which is not fun. Uh, but let's just say, right? And then you have sleep, which is even the less accurate sleep moves. You know, like 60% hypnosis. Like 60% is still a lot better than 10, especially over uh, multiple turns. Or you know, the 75% uh, sleep powder. And I mean, spore, obviously, is just nightmarish. So when you can summon free turns like that, then the advantage is really, really huge. Especially because the counterplay is so limited. Not every Pokemon can run Lumberry. Not every, or not even, never, not every team can fit a Pokemon that can run Lumberry. Or can fit Sleep Talk into its moveset. Or, 
uh, the sleep blockers, or like uh, Poison Heal Gliscor, for example, or in Gen 6 and onwards, when grass types aren't, immu aren't now immune to spore and sleep powder, then uh, even then, they do not have to... Uh, they are not necessarily capable of blocking sleep. Uh, like, a uh, classic example, as McMega misses Meteor Mash tragically and loses the game. That was really sad to see. Uh, and the Zapdos getting its revenge for the RNG from earlier on. I don't actually mean that. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, so when you have a Ferrothorn in Gen 6, for example, oh, it blocks Amoongus' sleep. Oh, well, it has HP Fire, so it doesn't actually. You know, it temporarily does, but it's not like a permanent answer. So, not to mention there are so many ways around it. You know, not every lump Pokemon can switch into Breloom, for example. You know, or Sleep Talker and whatnot. Like, uh, Sleep Talk, that's the GSC dilemma. The best Sleep Talker is Zapdos, and that does not want to switch into Jinx at all, and it's Lovely Kiss. So people are forced into running Rest Talk Snorlaxes, which are much less threatening than its other variants, but they have to, to just to deal with sleep. So, the idea at its core is that sleep is... The free turns generated are just too much of an advantage if you can summon them this consistently and the counterplay is either shaky or hoping for luck and even when you do have sleep uh, uh even when you're using sleep it introduces rng because let's say that you have something with sleep and a setup move and you can either just set up multiple times in a row or you could just get blasted like nothing and yeah i mean that's why i picked this game also because I mean, Smeargle being viable in OU at all has pretty much everything to do with Spore and its power. So, I mean, every generation has little specificities of how sleep can be done. In Gen 1, uh, the turns... First of all, sleep is really long in Gens 1 and 2. And it's uh, the whole... A lot of RBY revolves around getting asleep. Or, you know, freeze and paralysis, things like that. But sleep is such a big status because you can demand, you can force that sleep powder. Nothing blocks sleep powder in Gen 1. There's no abilities, no items, no sleep talk. Uh, no, and Exeggutor is not immune to it, so. So yeah, Gen 1 has uh, long sleep, 1 to 6 turns, I believe. Or 0 to 5, depending on... It's 5 or 6, I think. Well, whatever, not the, it's, it's long. It's longer than other generations. It's been a while since I RBY'd. But the thing is, it's either 0 to 5 or 6. I think it's 0 to 5. Uh, because you can wake up on the turn you get slept. But what makes it even worse is that even as, like was said before, even as you wake up, you don't necessarily move. Or not necessarily, you don't move. It's why rest is uh, you, one turn of sleep, but on the turn you wake up, you're still not doing anything. So you, if you attack a sleeping Pokemon with Tauros, for example, then you know it is not, even if it wakes up, it is not hitting you on that turn. It's very safe. You know, in Gen 2, then you now have sleep function the way we know it now, like you can wake up and still attack on the same turn, but sleep is uh, one to seven turns. You no longer wake up on uh, the turn you were slept, but now you can attack when you wake up. But it's also one to seven turns, which is outrageous, and it's counteracted mostly by the fact that Sleep Talk is everywhere, and the fact that Sleep Talk can call rest, so you can reset your own sleep, and you are in charge of your own healing even while asleep, which is not the same in later generations. I wonder if it'd be, uh, well, it'd be pretty nice if it was. But yeah, then you just have incredible things. Like, that's why Snorlax has to run Sleep Talk. Uh, you think, oh, well, you know, Jinx will put me to sleep, but I'll wake up and rest eventually, right? It's like, and then you sleep for six turns, and it just beats you down. It's, yeah, <laughs> you really have to, even GSC, like, oh, Sleep Talk, it's stall. It's like, no, Sleep Talk is trying to withstand all this offense, because, again, resting without Sleep Talk is giving free turns to monsters like Jinx and Machamp and Growth Vaporeon and Marowak that you do not want to give free turns to. It's why Roar Raikou has suffered such a downturn in this so-called slow generation that, oh, well, everything's slow and everything rests. It's like, yeah, rest and attacks while resting. It's... Sleep Talk is not necessarily just to reinforce your own longevity. It's also so you're not a sitting duck for everything coming in while you're sleeping. It's a very aggressive uh, use of anti-sleep. So, and then Gen 3 is a sleep like the way we know it now, you know, minus the fact that you can still spore grass types. Uh, but you, know, you have more Lumberries now, but running Lumberry is not riskless in Gen 3. There's permanent sand everywhere. And there has been talk about banning sleep 
well in in RBY it's been uh, more it, it's been less common to my knowledge GSC thrown around but you know lightly because of how the only time it's ever been really anywhere remotely serious and still not actually serious has been in regards to lovely kiss Snorlax which is you know make no mistake a dumb Pokemon so yeah there's also the um, the Gen 3 complaint about sleep and this was around the time Breloom was starting to get popular just because it's the same complaint uh, pretty much. I mean, and yeah, you can say, oh, Breloom and Smeargle and Venusaur and uh, all other issues. And the real point of contention is Hypnosis Gengar. And that, I mean, look, if you were experiencing Gen 9 Hypnosis Darkrai, uh, being obnoxious, just wait till you run into Hypnosis Gengar. Because Hypnosis Gengar has incredible defensive typing for advance, so it gets lots of opportunities. It'll shut you down late in the game so hard. And it, it forces a lot of switches. And that's why a lot of the best uh, uses of sleep are on the switch. Because you cannot burn a sleep turn as you're switching. Or uh, this is why Sing Blissey is actually good in advance too. Awesome Tito's had this uh, idea that pretty much Sing Blissey is always going last. Because it takes so many hits. Or on the switch. And if you sleep uh, and you hit second, then they are not burning a sleep turn, so you can switch and guarantee that they will not wake up. Whereas if you hypnosis something with Gengar, then, I mean, the odds with hypnosis Gengar are just so stupid, because you have 60% to hit, and you're probably going first, and then you switch out, and they can already wake up. So, between the 60% of the initial hit, and then the chance that they wake up already, it can get ugly. But, on the other hand, you also have the chance of having such a fast sleeper and then the sleep duration goes on for four turns, and you're just helpless as they beat you up. <laughs> it's... Such free turns are just so calamitous, potentially, in the hands of good players, and it just feels like too much of an advantage. And Gen 4, there have been similar complaints about Breloom. Uh, some players were complaining about Sleep Powder Roserade. You know, and I, that one is less serious. It's really the Breloom of it all. Breloom has been quite metagame warping. And for the record, I did not hate the idea of a sleep ban simply because Breloom is still an excellent Pokemon without sport, and it does a lot for the metagame without sport, and I don't think it needs sport to be a solid metagame presence. Now, I'm not feeling as strongly about it, but I think that Spore Loom definitely... I mean, it, it definitely does... When you have to fit sleep talk, which gimps a lot of movesets, by the way. Like, it's not a... Whenever someone says, oh, we'll just use so-and-so to handle sleep, it's not that easy. If you're trying to make... And this goes for every broken element. Oh, well, Genesect's not that hard to beat. Just use uh, such and such. Uh, Pokemon that doesn't exist that counters Genesect. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's easy to say that. But when you are building teams at a high level and trying to actually take on the metagame then you will realize how cramped your options are, even when dealing with non-broken stuff. So when you have to... And you're trying to use things that are good and not overly specific. And Sleep Talk isn't even particularly good. It's not like every Sleep Talker can deal with uh, these Pokemon. It's not like every Sleep Talker is also going to have a move set that really means anything. So what I mean by that is, in Gen 2, if you have a Surf, Ice Beam, Rest, uh, Sleep Talk, Suicune, then no matter what you pull against Nidoking, you will have a good result. You'll Surf it, you'll Ice Beam it, you'll Rest. But not every Pokemon is like that, you know? And if you have a Rest Talk Rotom in DBP, for example, and you switch into Breloom, and you Sleep Talk Will-O-Wisp, it's like, oh yeah, Sleep Talk Will-O-Wisp into the Poison Heal Breloom, that's useful. But what are you going to do, not run Will-O-Wisp on your uh, Rest Talk Rotom? Come on. So, yeah, that's, um, that's the issue, basically. You can't just run Sleep Talk, you can't just run Lumber, you can't just... I mean, not that there aren't good tactics to work around sleep, but it's not reliable. There's a reason why those anti-sleep tactics really rely on not being expected much of the time, like Lumberry. Because if I know a Lumberry Pokemon is coming in consistently, I'm just going to hit it. You know, like, if Lum, if Lum Jirachi was so standard that it was switching into Breloom every time, then Breloom would just start using fighting moves on the Switch, and suddenly Lum Jirachi ceases to be a good switch into Breloom. You see what I mean? So... Yeah, it's, it doesn't, the, the anti-sleep answers don't last, and sleep is always around, and that's kind of the thing. And then Gen 5 obviously has the worst sleep mechanics ever, where it resets on the Switch, so y y that had to be banned, of course, even though some people really miss Amoongus, and I understand. But, yeah, that, w that was just even worse than Gen 9, uh, 
Well, not that I know anything about Gen 9, but I think it was mostly Hypnosis Darkrai. I don't think most people were complaining about Hypnosis Iron Valiant. I don't know. But, yeah, Gen 5 sleep was ridiculous because there were several different sleepers. I mean, you had Spore, Breelum, and Amoongus, an amazing Pokemon. And you also had, like, stupid stuff like Hypnosis Politoed. <laughs> I remember, like, we, uh, I was helping my teammate in an SPL game. We were, I was building his team. And we had a free move slot on Politoed. And I was like, you know what, dude? I I'm going to put Hypnosis on there. Because it's not like you're really going to need anything else. And the potential upsides for Hypnosis, it can steal games or situations, let's say, that nothing else could. It, it can just do such unbelievably dumb things. Uh, where no other move could possibly do this. And if, you know, it doesn't work, then it wasn't working out anyway. So it's really a desperation move that can kind of... You know, and then, I don't... It doesn't have to be used in desperation. You can just have a free turn. I mean, you can have a free turn and, you know... This is why also my Scald is stupid. But if you free turn and Hydro or Ice Beam or whatever, it's still not the same thing as when you have a free turn and you sleep something. And then you potentially just take it out of the game immediately. I mean, that's really sleep at its core is you click one move and you might just have shut something down for the whole game. That's way... And, you know, it's not like you can do that with other moves nearly as easily. Uh, so... And and other moves that do do that, like, let's say, a Specs Draco Meteor that kills everything, then those Pokemon that are able to do that are kind of looked at. But these aren't, you know, 500 base power using monsters. I'm thinking of Explosion. You know, or anything of the sort. And an Explosion at least sacrifices yourself. No, these are just, you know, any Pokemon with a sleep move. And they can potentially... And if it's a good Pokemon, then my god. So, I mean, this is why Darkrai was such a terrifying force in gens 4 through 6 of ubers before the dark void nerf and was just absolutely ridiculous i remember there was a tournament for oris ubers without Darkrai, and Darkrai isn't even the best pokemon in oris ubers it was just they were so so sick of the dice rolls that they thought it was ruining the tier and they thought the tier would be much better off without it simply because it take what you try to do in pokemon is you try to limit game elements that take the game out of both players' hands, where it is just RNG. You want them to be interacting with each other. You want them to, you know, be having a battle of wits. And that's why you try to remove things like Baton Pass or, you know, Double Team or whatever other... Or Scald, wink, wink. Or, you know, Double Freezes or anything that just swings the game too much in the favor of the RNG and makes it so that, you know, the player on the receiving end of it can't really do much but hope that it goes their way. So... Yeah, that's why things like Iron uh, Jirachi Iron Head and Advanced Rock Slide are also complained about, or T Wave in general. It's a similar principle, and sleep very much falls under it. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, to finish off that Gen Five example, and we put him on that Politoed, and in the SPL game, he brought it to. He just slept a low health Jellicent, and where it otherwise would have recovered, and I think it was manageable, but you know, it, it just turned the Jellicent from you know pretty threatening to complete non-factor he hypnosis it and then he you know hit it again with a psychic and then it was it was gone and you know it was even going to be out of range for uh, hp grass if we had it's not like any other move could have really i guess toxic could have helped but not quite the same not quite the same jelson could still be active and threatening while toxic it can't while slept so uh yeah and then gen 6 i mean you could now block it more easily but it's still it's not really a problem in Gen 6, but you know, when Amoongus does get that spore off and then follows it up with heavy hitters, it can be kind of stupid. You know, you have all sorts of these dumb games where Ferrothorn tries to block it, and then it's trying to, you know, pivot to Heatran or, Gliss or a pre-Toxic Orb activated Gliscor on the Switch, and they really don't want to be spore, but they don't want to let just Ferrothorn kill their, or Amoongus kill their Ferrothorn. So it can be kind of silly, and then the results are just, you know, they might just never wake up. It's terrifying. So, uh, it's very Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, and then, uh, Gen 7, I don't remember sleep being much of a factor, although I could just be having an old man moment. And then Gen 8, I won't pretend to remember it. I think Amoongus gets used there, but, yeah. Oh, uh, Sleep Powder Mega Venusaur, uh, was quite good in Gen, uh, Gen 7. But then again, it also doesn't really need to use the move, you know? So, but yeah, so, should sleep be banned? I, I don't really like when people come in and say, let's just ban it from every generation, because they're not really qualified to talk about every generation, you know? It's just like, I know people really like their uniformity of rule set and their symmetry of how every tier has this and this, and how it 
brings up stupid stuff like, oh, well, why is Baton Pass allowed in Gen 3? Why is it the only Gen where... And it's like, come on, you, know, you don't know anything about Gen 3. Leave it alone. And even you know people who do know something about Gen 3, when your argument is, it's like this in every other generation, it's like, and? It doesn't matter. Like, who is this helping? The fact that... It, I guess it satisfies someone's sense of... I don't know, maybe they have a peaceful feeling from watching everything be the same across. Uh, whatever, it's not a good basis for a rule set. So whenever someone says, oh, let's just ban sleep from every generation, or every generation with fairy types, or team preview, or whatever, I'm just like, dude, take it case by case. Like, it, does Gen 7, I, I, this is a real question, I don't really think Gen 7 or 8 need a sleep ban. If they do, feel free to correct me, or Gen 6 for that matter. You know, but Gen 5 obviously does. Gen 4 or 3, I can see it. Gen 2, I could I could see it too. So, and Gen 1, I won't pretend to comment on. Because um, that's such an overhaul, I can't even imagine it. Whereas I can imagine the other generations. That's basically it. So, uh, yeah, I would take it case by case. But I do think that fundamentally, sleep is an incredibly stupid mechanic. And we have put up with it for as long as we have. Because er early in competitive Pokemon's history, banning things was reserved for the Mewtwo's and Mews of the world. And uh, even Mew was kind of like, are we sure we can't handle this? There's such a thing as Mew OU. Uh, or Mewbers. Uh, if I'm remembering the correct use of Mewbers and not just... Because uh, otherwise it would just be Ubers, right? Anyway... Yeah, so sleep is a fundamentally stupid thing. And back when we didn't ban anything except the Mewtwo's of the world... And then it was like, banning a move? Are you out of your mind? Get good and deal with it. And you know now over time, we realize that that's not really reasonable for a lot of things that we accepted for so long. And we are ex realizing more and more uh, just how absurd it is. And we're kind of finally you know waking up because we have been living inside a dream. And uh, now we're trying to do something about it. So I have no issue with anyone trying to... Except, like, if sleep was introduced, you know, more recently, I think we would have had, we would, we would have been up in arms about it. It's like, what do you mean this free turn, these free turns that can last for up to four turns? Are you out of your mind? So, and it's not just Magikarp using it either. So, yeah, I, I get it. I think uh, sleep could be looked at in several generations. And, uh, yeah. Now, as for the process of just, you know, let's nuke it without asking anyone, that I don't know about. But... Well, I guess I'm mixed on that because, well, that's a whole other subject. Anyway, thank you so much for watching slash listening. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.